Welcome everybody, welcome to our episode. I'm so excited and honoured. We have the incredible Liz DeFinis here with us. Welcome Liz. Thank you so much. So excited for our conversation. Liz and I speak the same language, so this is going to be a really, really juicy one. I'm going to just introduce Liz so that you get a sense of her amazingness. Liz is a homeschooling mum of three who started the Aligned Mama a six-figure business inspiring high-achieving mums to manifest meaningful moments without sacrificing their career goals using Reiki-aligned psychology. Liz also helps build and run a multi-seven-figure business inspiring high-vibe entrepreneurs to close unicorn clients without the struggle of cold outreach, using energetically aligned social selling strategies. Discovering the balance between the many roles is something Liz thrives in and she loves to help other high-achieving mums to do the same. Welcome, Liz. Thank you so much. Such a, an inspiring intro, you know, to look at all of the things that are there. It's incredible. Absolutely incredible. And congratulations on home- homeschooling your your children as well, because <laughs> I, I imagine that that is not an easy task. What ages are they? Uh, my oldest is 10. My middle is, he will be nine actually in about a week and a half. And my daughter is three. So we have a little bit of a range there for sure, as far as homeschool and, and all of that kind of goes. <laughs> oh, just wonderful. I, when I look back, I wish I'd kind of known about it and t- done that myself as well, because I just think it's such a gift to be able to offer your children. Yeah. You know, it's interesting because I always wanted to homeschool. I always had that that desire and drive. And I had one of my best friends homeschooled her kids. And I always used to watch her homeschool. And I was like, I want to do that. I want to do that, you know, but I worked more of a traditional nine to five job. I was an occupational therapist at the time and it just wasn't really in the cards. I mean, I went as far as looking up places to see, like, could I put them in some sort of care during the day and work and then homeschool at night and not put them like in a traditional school setting? Um, But it just, it didn't really work, you know, was it really going to work long term? Um, And so be getting to this place where I am right now was really like such a long coming dream that like I had all these little kind of little little marks along the way like little nudges where it was like I could feel the I'm supposed to do this one day feeling but like couldn't see the how right and it was like the how kind of came in later um so I'm very grateful that you know I get that opportunity and I get to do all the things with them amazing sounds like you've really reinvented yourself because you mentioned about your previous nine to five how how did that how did you get from doing your nine to five to having your own business? What's, what's your, what's your story there? Yeah. So it's an interesting story, actually. Um, you know, I always kind of wanted to start a business. I, I kind of blogged a little bit, but it was, it wasn't a very, like, it, it was not lucrative at all. Like as in no money, <laughs> I had no idea how to monetize it. Um, so I just would write articles here and there. Um, I wanted to write a book. Like I had all these aspirations, but at the time I had my boys who were young, I was working a full-time job and I went back to school for my PhD in psychology. So, you know, the starting a business kind of had the back burner piece. And it was like, I could feel that again, it was one of those moments where I could feel the pull inside of me of like, I meant for this. Um, I would sit, I, I was working in home health at the time. So before I would go out and see a patient, I would sit down and I would be like typing on my computer. And I was like, this is what I meant to do right here is like, do this thing where I'm working from home and I'm typing and I'm writing and expressing Um, but it wasn't until a couple years later, it was several years later when I had my daughter and my daughter in January of 2020. And when I had my daughter, when she was born, she had a stroke and, um, everything just stopped, you know, life was just stopped on a dime, you know, everything Mm. stopped, um, priority shifted. Like I realized that like, I, I could do what I wanted to do. I needed to do what I wanted to do all along. Um, I had already felt a little bit of that, like mom guilt come in because, I was having another baby. And again, I felt like I wasn't going to be able to be home with her. I was still working Mm -hmm. the nine to five and I always had the dream of the business, but I hadn't done anything with the dream yet. And so I felt that feeling of like, you know, here I am again, another baby doing the same thing. And I was so annoyed with that decision. Um, But, you know, she had seizures and there were all of these different medical complications. And so putting her in traditional daycare was not ideal. And in fact, the daycares wouldn't accept her. Um, The daycare that we had uh, spot at told us that they they wouldn't accept her as um as somebody that could take care of anymore because of the seizures. And so I was very quickly put on that path of like, what do I want to do and how am I going to make this happen? And um 2020 was the year of COVID. So she was born in January, COVID hit a few months later, school shut down, boys came home. I was like, what am I doing here? And so 
I went all in on my business, you know, and it's one of those things where I went all in, like I really stayed all in through all of the things. And I actually had always planned on going back to the nine to five. Like that was still the backup plan, but I got laid off. And it was one of those weird moments where I knew that that was coming. Like I could feel the resistance inside of me of the fact that like I was not meant to go back there. Um, but I don't know that I would have acted on it totally on my own. I was making six figures and it's scary to have a family of three and to leave a six figure job when you're the breadwinner and you know that like the house and the car and the car insurance, all of these things need to be paid. It's scary to leave that job willingly um, and put all your eggs in the basket of I'm going to be able to make six figures in my business. But I did make six figures in my business and I did it really quickly. And so that's how I shifted, you know, but um, that inspiration of of having my daughter and wanting to be the one that takes care of her and is there for her and ensures her safety. That was a big part of the the transformation in that moment that like really pushed me in. That's amazing, Liz. That is just incredible. I, I what a journey and an incredible way how the universe can kind of get really give us a massive push into the direction of where we're really meant to be. Um and how Sometimes it does take those values to get really, to get that clarity around actually what our values are and how we can live in alignment with them when we really recognize that something is kind of out of alignment and all the, the, the experiences that you're having with your with your daughter, which is something so, you know, huge to go through for yourself and for her and for the whole family. Yeah. Huge. And it really changed me as a person in those moments. I mean, it wasn't just like, oh, I decided to start a business. It was like, I looked around and I realized that like, I was such a type A personality. Like uh, if I want something, I'm going to make it happen. You know, I'm going to work hard, you know, even in school, like, yeah, I got my PhD in psychology, but like all through school, through everything from high school to getting my master's to, you know, my PhD, you know, learning wasn't something that like for some people, it's just innate. For me, I had to work at that. You know, I studied hard and I did the work and like, I really had to like put myself into what I did to, to do well. It wasn't just like a a natural thing for me. And so I was not, you know, somebody who would shy away at working really hard. But when I had my daughter, I had that realization of like, I did all the things I needed to do to help her get better. And she wasn't getting better. And it was in, there was one particular moment when she was in the hospital where we were supposed to take her home. And literally as they're signing the papers, she has another seizure and they have to put her, you know, back on more seizure meds. It was just this whole thing. And that roller coaster in that moment I had to completely surrender because I realized in that moment that I had done all the work to get the results. And that isn't always where it's at. And that's when this whole world of energetic alignment and being able to surrender, to allow that surrender doesn't mean giving up, which is what I had previously really associated that word with to, you know, it's actually a higher level of allowance and, um, allowing support, allowing yourself to receive. And so I had never experienced anything like that before. And I've got to tell you, like those moments, everything just shifted. And I mean, you see my daughter today, she has no effects from the stroke. And that was not the prognosis in in the times, you know, in the moment we were told a lot of things about her prognosis of no movement on the left side of her body and feeding tubes and you know all of these things. If you saw her today, you would have no idea that that even happened. And that's the power of being able to receive support of being able to surrender and allow things to happen around you. And so everything transformed, not just like, oh yeah, like leaving a nine to five and starting a business, but who I became as a person, who I became as a mother, all of that changed in those moments. So much. There's so many layers of that, like in terms of, you know, reinventing yourself and your identity and that when you were were talking about that piece around the the energetics behind surrendering that's just absolutely um it's such a subtle shift isn't it but it, it it's in the subtlety that it, the power is there of really understanding what it means to surrender to actually elevate that what you'll allow in and allowing in support and being able to allow in more support that's just one of those key energetic pieces for us being in alignment isn't it with and allowing ourselves to grow our businesses so we can make a make a bigger impact. Yeah, absolutely. It is very subtle. And that's that's the thing. And that's where it's like a lot of times um, 
when working with clients, you know, they're searching for this like big change. Like I have to change all of these things. And it's like, it's actually probably just one little tiny thing. And it's probably not something that you think it is. It's not really what you're doing. It's how you're doing it. It's how you feel. It's your energy that's going into the thing that you're doing. That's the thing that really creates that impact. And so when we bring awareness to that, it, that's that's where those changes happen. Our massive transformations happen in those little tiny micro shifts that we make. And, you know, allowing it to be that simple is sometimes the biggest challenge. <laughs> True. <laughs> we want to complicate it. So we complicate it by not allowing it to be simple. <laughs> it's so true. So how how so you've talked about how you started your business and uh, you mentioned about your background in occupational therapy and and psychology how has that all panned out and uh, played a role in starting and and running your business as well yeah so there's so many different layers and i actually just launched a new program recently um called fulfillment first which is really about being able to place fulfillment first and then success follows right it's the concept of when we are really allowing ourselves to feel fulfilled and really embody that feeling it allows more money it allows more opportunities more relationships more connections like whatever the thing is that you want it doesn't matter what success means to you it will come your way when you are allowing yourself to tap into that fulfillment and so fulfillment first in particular brings together all of these pieces of psychology and occupational therapy. And so in the field of OT, we have um, what we call areas of occupations. We use this document called the framework, which is like the Bible of OT, basically. <laughs> Everything you do comes from the framework, the documentation to the way that you work with people to how you write goals. And so in there, there's areas of occupation and it's things like basic needs, like self-care, like being able to shower and feed yourself, right? But then it goes on to going into, um, more of the care of others around you, like child rearing and caring of pets, taking care of your house, medical management, being able to take care of like yourself medically and physically in those ways. Um, there's education and there's play and there's leisure and there's all these different great areas of occupation. And I mean, the truth is most of us do not have what the general term would be balance between these different areas. But the key to understanding the balance of those areas is to know that balance doesn't always have to mean equal parts. Mm -hmm. Yes, on a scale, it does. I get that, like the scale, we have both sides. We don't want one to go up higher or lower, right? But it's about the feeling of balance, not about actual mathematical balance, right? And so we can choose to engage in a leisure activity for something as short as five minutes, and it can create a massive impact on how we're feeling, which then that how goes into everything else that we do. So when we create this type of embodied balance in what we do, it allows us to get to where we want to go. It allows us to create the feeling of fulfillment because we're putting ourselves in that place where we get to feel fulfilled in what we do before we're going in and, and allowing our energy to ripple out from there. And so when we're when I'm looking at psychology and I'm looking at OT, I've taken both of those worlds and combined them into this program that really allows clients to come in and have these 12 different areas that they're really looking at and considering and how it ripples out into their life. So it's been a lot of fun to see all of those pieces come into play. Um, but ultimately, I mean, OT and psych is at the root of everything that I do. And so for sure, working with clients, for sure, the content, the podcast, all of the pieces, it's helping and inspiring moms to see that they can really enjoy all of the moments with their kids and still crush those career goals. They can have that thing that we talk about, like, having it all. And we don't have to have the overwhelm. We don't have to have the burnout story because when we approach it from the fulfillment first perspective, it allows and opens the doors for all of the things. That's so true. So true. Because I think that's one of the things that often it's, it is burnout, isn't it? That will drive someone to then going, hang on a second, I'm completely out of balance. This isn't sustainable. And it impacts all areas of life. Of course, it impacts your health, but it impacts your relationships at, at work, family, you know, children, <laughs> ev everywhere. Um, and it, I think that one of the things that I see is when people have experienced burnout, the fear of burnout, because it's so dehabilitating, really can stop people in their tracks. And then they know that they need to kind of approach life in a different way so that they can allow themselves to not be trying to kind of create from a space of not having burnout, but being able to, as you so beautifully put it around, 
leading with that fulfillment first and really being in alignment with your values and how how you want to experience and and to have it all because you truly can that, yeah yeah I love what you do I just think it's so so key and it has such a, a, a huge impact on well not only the mums that you're working with but their whole entire family this is huge stuff Liz yeah it does you know that ability to really cultivate a sense of interdependence with children rather than codependence and you know a lot of that like we hear a lot of a lot of like words being thrown out about generational bonds and generational shifts and you know you got to break the patterns of the generation and Yes and no. I mean, it's definitely that for sure. Like there's definitely generational impacts, but it's what we do with those. And so it's allowing ourselves, the only way to really make a shift is to create awareness around what's really happening. And what's really happening is that we're just not aware. <laughs> and so if we can just like, you know, bring some awareness in the moment and really look at that and allow for the interdependence with our kids to come into play that impacts their kids and that impacts their kids. And it just impacts all of the relationships around and creates a lot more reciprocal energy, which we all know the world could use a little bit more of. Absolutely. And, and I, I think what you've also modeled as well for your children is showing them how they can do life in a different way from having done the nine to five and then completely changing what you're doing and, and being able to go, hang on, I'm going to lead myself with fulfillment first um it's transformational from that perspective as well I love it I love it what does it because we talk about alignment I talk about alignment all the time which was when I was uh, reading your bio I was like yes <laughs> this, this is just so fantastic so from your perspective what does it mean to be to be an aligned mum and and how does this core of your part of your business impact how you're living your life now and and serving your clients. I'd love to hear more, more of this. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I mean, alignment is such an interesting thing because it's, it's kind of a blanket statement that a lot of, it's like the word manifestation, you know, it's like, it's a little bit overused. It's like a buzzword at this point. Right. And so it kind of loses its, its punch, its meaning mm. when it happens. And so something that I really talk about a lot with alignment is the fact that it is different for everybody. It is not just like going to look like one thing. And it's not always going to feel easy. There's like this, this feeling of like alignment means everything happens with ease. And it's like, yes and no, because sometimes what we do is going to feel uncomfortable. I mean, when I launched and went all in on my business, it was very aligned. Going back to nine to five was not aligned anymore. It doesn't mean it felt easy. It doesn't mean it didn't feel scary, right? It still felt scary to have lost my job and had no money in the savings that they're spending at the hospital and jumping in and investing in a coaching program so that I could really take off and do what I wanted to do. That did not feel good. <laughs> so there's some misconceptions around the fact that alignment always feels easy and, and great and wonderful. It's blissful, like running through a field of flowers. Like that's not real, right? Like that's not real life. And I think that when we look at alignment, it's being able to understand alignment isn't perfection. Alignment is a deeper understanding of yourself and like who you are and what you desire to have and being able to make choices that align with helping you get there, knowing that many of those choices will feel challenging because if we're allowing ourselves to truly align and go in the direction that we're feeling like we're being called in and we want to go, it means change. And change very often is uncomfortable. Even in the scientific world, do you think about water changing, right? We go from regular water to steam. Boiling water, it's not going to feel comfortable to the molecules for the change, right? And so when we're allowing ourselves to change as humans, understanding that that's going to come with some uncomfortableness. But that uncomfortableness is exactly what creates the transformation. And it's what allows us to get to where we want to go, to become the person who can go where we want to go. And so alignment is not perfection. It doesn't always feel easy, but it does allow for opportunities for new, new doors to be unlocked and to have the comfortability of being able to walk through those doors. Yes, absolutely. And I think you, you, you touched on there something that I talk about with, with my clients as well around um, alignment and being able to move the, the journey of moving towards alignment. Um, what can what will come up because change is uncomfortable is resistance and so often people will start to use the resistance as an, a reason reason 
for why they're not going to move forward with what they said that they wanted to do in the first place, whatever that might be, whether let's, you know, say, you know, growing, growing a business or taking, launching a new program or a product. Suddenly it's like, oh, I'm out of alignment. The resistance come up has come up. So therefore I'm, the universe is telling me I shouldn't do it. No, no, those are just thoughts being triggered by the nervous system, <laughs> showing you really that you're actually going in the right direction and you need to kind of be able to move through and allow your body to feel safe so you can get back into that feeling of alignment. Yeah, absolutely. And that's that thing of, are you the type of person who's willing to become the person who can look the fear in the face and really go after what you desire, you know, to go all in on it anyway, even if logic has you afraid, has you saying no. I mean, a lot of times we want things in our life. I mean, I know with, you know, the online coaching world, there's a perfect example of this, you know, getting results, like, I mean, even six figure years, but six figure months, million dollar years, all of these results, right? People, it, it feels like, oh my gosh, yes. Like I want that, right? They hear the money and they're like, I want it, I want it, right? But how logical is it in the common world of nine to five to make, I mean, even six figures a year is not overly common for everybody. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's common for some, but let's talk about a six figure month. Who makes a six figure month in a nine to five job? I mean, hardly anybody, right? Hardly anybody. I mean, the person that's doing that likely owns a business, which puts them in the category of entrepreneur. And yeah, maybe they hire people that work for their company that are employees working nine to five, but they're not really technically working a nine to five, right? So when we're looking at the logical world of nine to five, why are we asking for illogical results, like six figure months? When that doesn't make any sense, we're applying logic to the decision of getting there, but we're trying to apply logic to get to a place that is illogical. So of mm -hmm. course, when we use our logic brain to make the decision to run a business like this, it's not really, you're not going to go that path. Your logic brain is going to talk you right back to that nine to five because that's what makes sense logically, right? Your logic brain is there to do that for you. It's there to help you. It's protecting you, all of the things. But are you going to become the person who says, I see the logic. I know that it doesn't quite add up on paper yet, but I know that this is possible. I can feel it. I know that I can do it. And then going all in anyway, even though it feels scary. And that's the thing is becoming that person who's able to peel all those layers back, right? Pull that apart and create that result. Yes. And you, you mentioned there about feeling, feeling that, that it's possible. I, I see this a lot where that's where the breakthrough happens, where people can actually, they know it in their core. It feels illogical, but they can feel that it's, they know it's happening because their frequencies change. They've, they've completely in alignment with that outcome. And it, it's, it's done. It's already here. <laughs> it's just when it actually rocks up in reality, it's like, of course, yeah, it was inevitable absolutely inevitable there's so much here gosh we could have like a, a week podcast on this conversation <laughs> as we kind of reflect back on all the things that you've shared what would be your sort of top three tips for entrepreneurs who are really desiring to to lead with fulfillment first to have that success in in all areas of life so that they can you know go for it yeah, I think the big one is listening to yourself. We have a tendency to turn that off. We get the nudge from our higher self that's like, you should go for a walk or like drink more water today or you should paint. Like whatever the thing is that you're being nudged to do, take action on it right away. You know, don't push that little voice down. Allow yourself to just, um, and I talk about with clients, a yes day, like letting yourself just say yes to yourself a whole day for every nudge you get, you know? Um, just take action on it. And so that will allow you to tap into new levels of fulfillment that you haven't really been looking at. Um, again, similar to what we talked about before, and this is tip number two, is it's not always the big thing. It's the little tiny shift that can create that bigger ripple impact. So something as simple as saying yes to yourself, this doesn't have to be a big day. It doesn't have to be a you know $20,000 vacation. This is a choosing to drink an extra cup of water, going for a walk around the block, choosing to paint a painting today. That is the little thing that can trigger a huge transformation that impacts everything in your business in a way that's totally unrelated. And so tapping into that, allowing it to be small, not making these huge, you know, monumentous efforts to try to make a transformation. And the third tip that I have is really being able to tap into a place of vulnerability. 
a lot of times we are living our life um, working through imposter syndrome, working through being not good enough, feeling the not good enough from the stories of our past. And it holds us in a place that we're kind of like frozen in time and we don't allow ourselves to open our wings and spread them wide and, and go all in, right? We keep ourselves small and safe. And it's normal to want to keep yourself safe. But when we can tap into this and we really allow ourselves to spread our wings and go all out, be vulnerable, be real, be the person that shares the real truth behind things, because that is what really ultimately leads to a wider net, a wider impact. And of course, when we do that, that reciprocal energy flows back in on the other side. So true. I love that, that the power, it is the power of being vulnerable and being authentic in how we're showing up to really honor ourselves gives other people permission as well, doesn't it? To, to feel that they can truly be themselves. There's so much within what you've just shared there. It's, it's incredible. Thank you. That's just wonderful, wonderful tips that people can implement straight away and start to really question kind of how am I how am I being vulnerable in, in, in how I'm showing up in my business or what am I not? Is that something that uh, I can increase my awareness around? I love it. Absolutely love it. Just to, just to wrap up, Liz, what's your, what does prosperity mean, mean to you? Yeah. So, you know, prosperity, it's such an interesting concept, right? To, to be prosperous, right. And to think about what that, what that can ripple out and become. And a lot of times, I think the easy answer to this is, you know, making more money, right? It's making more money. And similar to what we've talked about throughout, throughout our podcast time together here is looking at this and saying, yes, money. Yes, when I have prosperity, I'm making more money. I have more material things. I'm, I'm flourishing in all of the ways. Like I feel aligned and good and it's happening and you can feel the energy of it's happening fill you up. But knowing that we can only experience that, we can only really feel prosperous when we are allowing ourselves to feel feelings at all. And part of that is allowing fulfillment into our life. When we allow ourselves to feel other feelings, we will allow ourselves to become prosperous. And so that's what prosperity means to me is that it's allowing the have it all mentality in our feelings and allowing our feelings to flow so that we can attract those material things that we desire to have as well beautiful so much wisdom I love it I love it how can people come and connect with you Liz and and hang out in your world and I know you've got a free gift as well so tell us all the things that would be amazing thank you yeah absolutely so I do have a free gift it's called deeply driven desires it is a training um, helping you get into that very first step of manifestation of really being able to dive into that understand what those deep desires are inside of you. One of the things that I find with clients is that they aren't getting what they want because they aren't really clear about what they want. They kind of want this and they kind of want that. And there's a lot of fears around really like saying it out loud. We feel feelings. And I know that I have experienced multiple layers of this over my time with all of this work. So this is an opportunity to really be able to explore those feelings, express what you desire and to tap into those levels of manifestation. So definitely check out the training. Um, finding me, the easiest way to find me is probably on Facebook. Um, you could just look up Liz DeFinis. You'll see me pop up on there. Um, and, and, or on the website, the Aligned Mama is another great opportunity to connect. That's awesome. Thank you so much. That's an incredible gift as well. That sounds really, really cool. We'll pop all the links below the, the show as well. So people can come and come and find them, um, on, on all the different platforms as well. Thank you so much for coming and sharing your wisdom with our community. It's just been an absolute treat to, to have you on the show, Liz. Yes, thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you, everybody, for listening. We would love to hear what resonated for you. So do come and find us and let us know on Facebook or Instagram that what you've thought of our conversation. We'd love to carry on the conversation there. And please do share the podcast with those that you know need to hear this conversation as well. Until next time, sending you all loads and loads of love. Namaste. Thanks for listening to the Infinite Prosperity Podcast. And if you like what you've heard and want to know more, please go to louisahavers.com. We just appreciate you so much. So thank you for listening and hanging out with us. If there's anything that we can do for you, you can email us at louisa at louisahavers.com. Let my team know if you have any ideas for shows that you'd love to hear or topics you want me to talk about. Really looking forward to hearing from you. 
All right, that is it for this week, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for today. Looking forward to connecting with you again. Until next time, namaste.